If US and China go to war, who loses hour by hour? Really excited to get into this. Before we do, appreciate if you guys can hit subscribe button. Let's check out what will happen if US and China go to war. Hour zero. Sitting in his office, surrounded by his most trusted advisors, Xi Jinping feels ready. Okay. Over the past decade or more, he's spent billions upon billions modernizing China's military. Yo, this his nation now has nuclear weapons, around 500 of them, and he's built one of the world's largest navies. Okay, wow. Add to that the fact that China's military has more active members than any other nation, with yeah, 2.35 million people to call on. He's going to bring war to the United States. But to do so, he has to carefully coordinate Good attacks luck. throughout the Pacific. He knows that the United States has bases in Japan and South Korea, around okay. 190 in those two countries alone. And a power. Wait, they have. Wait, wait, America has 190 US bases in these two. <laughs> Yo! Yo, America knows what they're doing, bro. A full Navy that, though smaller than his, packs a lot more firepower. A full frontal assault on the United States what? without taking care of those problems first would be suicide. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling... Bro, America's too strong. You're telling me China would struggle just leaving this area if they went to war with America? He needs to secure the Pacific, giving China what? a route toward the American mainland as a priority. His attack doesn't begin with missile launches. Okay. It starts on the cyber front. For years, China has been working on cyber technology that would allow it to hack into American infrastructure and military defense systems, limiting America's response to an attack in the process. Oh. On occasion, China gets caught out. In Dude, December 2023, problem. for instance, the United States conducted an operation to disrupt a network of small office home office or Soho routers that China had taken control of using the KV botnet to mask its hacking activities. Wait, what? That was unfortunate for Xi. But it won't stop the first stage of his attack. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm a little bit confused. Wait, you're telling me that China hacked into something and America hacked it back? Is, is that what happened? I'm a little bit confused there. Xi gives the okay and dozens of cyber attacks begin. Chinese hackers work feverishly, targeting American water systems, electrical grids, and communication systems, Yo. with a special focus on any that are located near key military installations. Yo, isn't it crazy how we just live in a different world now? Like, bro, before even the firing happens and missiles and stuff, over the internet, they're turning you off. You know what I'm saying? Further attacks take place within the networks of companies that provide critical services to America's military as well as attacks on systems and transportation methods that will be used by the United States to deliver aid to Taiwan wow. in the case of a Chinese invasion. That last step is critical. To reach the United States, China has to secure a passage through the Pacific. Okay. Taiwan, which China has claimed for decades should be part of the People's Republic anyway, is chosen as the main target. By securing that island, China can break through the nations in the Pacific that are allied to the United States, including Japan and South Korea, and clear its route to the American mainland. Right. Hour 1. The United States is scrambling. It's no stranger to Chinese hackers, but it's never faced an operation of this scale before. The country's success against Vault Typhoon, the elite group of Chinese hackers that were responsible for the KV botnet attacks mentioned earlier… Yo, what is this KV botnet attacks? Why have I never heard of this? Build that China has its fingers in major networks. Rail, mass transit, maritime, water, and pipeline systems were all under threat. And though Vault Tycoon has been mostly eradicated, the sheer scale of the disruption occurring in the US reveals that it was far from the only hacker group China had in play. Wait, hold on, but we're missing some, bro. So, like, right now, China's attacking America with these cyber attacks. But what about like what about the other way around? Wouldn't America be doing the same to them as well? Like wouldn't it, wouldn't they both have a problem? And wouldn't America get their own hackers that have back into it and sort it all out? America is left chasing shadows at least for a couple of hours, which is all China needs to okay. start the next stage of its assault. Xi Jinping gives the okay for the next and boldest part of its strategy. And man, that made sense. It it was just a distraction for a couple of hours. America's got it all solved in a couple of hours. Of course they have. Activating the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force, or PLARF. The group has around 120,000 members who combine to operate six known ballistic missile bases throughout China. Okay. However, the PLARF's real strength lies in the sheer number of missiles it has at its disposal. 
Recent estimates from the US Naval Institute place the number at somewhere around 4,000, all of which are capable of targeting ships moving at sea in addition to static land-based targets. Right. Both capabilities will be needed by Xi. In arranging this attack, he's had to make some difficult decisions. He knew that a launch against Taiwan was inevitable, and the island nation became his first target. Okay. A missile barrage begins, with air support being provided by the recently upgraded bases at Longchan, Jiangsu, and Wan. All three Yo, I feel like China should be able to take Taiwan pretty easily if they could, if they wanted to. Like right now, I feel like this would be a quick operation. We are supporting China with fleets of Shenyang J-16 fighters launching missiles of their own while engaging Taiwanese defenses in the air. The tougher attacks focus on the US Pacific Fleet, right. numbering around 200 ships along with 1,500 aircraft and 150,000 military personnel. That fleet is the biggest barrier that stands in the way of Xi's Wait, ambition to invade Taiwan. the United States. It covers almost half of the world's surface, stretching from Antarctica to the Arctic Circle, taking in the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean in oh, the process. Okay. Xi can't hit everything in that fleet, but his goal is to strategically weaken the fleet in the early hours of his new war, eliminating America's ability to rapidly respond to his actions. Right. To do that, he needs a three-pronged missile attack. First, he has to engage. Them. Yo, I thought it was going to say they was all in Taiwan. I was thinking, yo, Taiwan's heavily defended by America then, but that's just their fleet that's close by. The naval bases the United States has set up in Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines. It's a risky move. Any missile strike on these nations hey, oh. will surely cause collateral damage, potentially bringing... Wait, are they not tanks? How are they swimming? Wait, how are the tanks dry? Are they tanks? Bro, they're not boats. How are they in water? <laughs> what is going on? He caused collateral damage, potentially bringing all three of them into the war in support of the US. Right. But failure to strike now means leaving nearly 200 bases ready to launch an immediate counterattack supported by around 79,000 troops. Xi can't take that risk. Okay. Hordes of Dongfeng-26 or DF-26 missiles are launched towards America's bases in Japan and South Korea. Each missile has a range of 2,485 miles. Yo, the thing is, though, this is what, like, China wouldn't be able to do this because, for example, right, yeah, this is a video of US versus China and US, I feel, you know, I've seen US military. I feel like they're going to handle it by themselves anyway. But if China has to send missiles into Japan and South Korea as well, they will get involved. They don't want missiles hitting them. Japan and South Korea are going to be like, okay, right? You're, you're messing with us now. You know what I'm saying? Then you got, then they got a burst. It would just end up being World War Three. <laughs> it really would. Because then they all get involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, like, bro, mad, mad. And I don't think, um, you know, who would it be? China and Russia? Mate. I don't think they, that them combined can be America. I'm not sure. <laughs> Easily ensuring they can reach their targets. They are accompanied by shorter range missiles, such as the DF-16, for a simple reason. Xi needs his DF-26s for attacks further afield. Right. Those very missiles are also part of the second part of China's missile barrage, attacking closer to the United States. More are sent flying toward Guam, targeting the Anderson Air Force Base in Yigo, as well as Naval Base Guam in Santa Rita. Xi also unleashes the new jewel in China's missile crown to strike Hawaii, the that? DF-27 is a hypersonic missile that can just about reach America's east coast and is capable of evading U.S. Hey. missile defenses. Hey, don't blow up Hawaii. Hawaii is a beautiful place. What have they done to you, man? Don't blow up Hawaii. Leave them alone. Just go past them and just do your fight, bro. It'll be Xi's chief weapon when attacking the American mainland, at least during the early stages of the war. Finally, the third strike, attacking American ships that are currently in the Pacific. Wait. Is there even American base? They will be, won't they? On Hawaii, they will be. Chief among the targets will be the small fleet of cruisers America has in the water near China, including the USS Shiloh and USS Mobile Bay. All told, there are nine of these ships, all packed with heavy armaments and strong anti-air defenses that China yeah. hopes to either eliminate or damage heavily. Secondary targets include the much larger fleet of U.S. Navy destroyers, which pack less of a punch than the country's cruisers, but will still be enough to cause serious damage to the Chinese fleet if they're allowed to go unchecked. Right. There are dozens to target, and Xi knows that he won't be able to take out all of them. But the more he can destroy with missiles now, the easier he'll find his invasion of Taiwan and subsequent passage to America. 
However, Xi's missiles won't have clear paths to their target. Hold up. At this point, do they not have Taiwan already? At this point? They're, they're struggling to get Taiwan? Bro, he's literally next door and it's tiny. Though his cyber attacks have left the United States scrambling, it hasn't shut down the country's missile defense systems. America's DSP satellites, overseen by its Space Force, easily detect China's missile launches, okay. giving President Joe Biden time to organize the country's defenses. Chief among these will be its ground-based interceptors or organize the country's defenses. Wait, 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 did he just say Joe Biden is organizing the country's defenses? Hey, listen, he's a sound guy, but I've seen some of his speeches. Um, I ain't making it political, bro. I'm just saying I've heard him talk. You know what I mean? I wouldn't really want him to be in charge of the defenses. Go, hey, put it to the military secretary or someone. Chief among these will be its ground-based interceptors, or GBIs, of which there are currently 44 active in the United States. Most of these systems, 40, are stationed in Alaska, right. though they're still capable of destroying intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, traveling at around 15,000 miles per hour. Wow. The other four are stationed in California, much closer to China's Hawaiian targets, and will be responsible for providing most of America's defenses against China's missile barrage. Wow. There's just one problem. What if any of the missiles contain nuclear warheads? Biden consults his advisors, who conclude that possibility is unlikely. American satellites show that the missiles are on course to hit its Pacific bases and Hawaii, suggesting a conventional strike. If Xi were going nuclear, his ICBMs would be on their way to Washington and other key strategic locations in the American mainland. Right, right now, the strategy is clear. Evacuate troops from the anticipated strike zones and hunker down. A counterattack will come, but at present, the US has to rely on its missile defense systems. Across the Pacific, Xi watches and waits as the first- Bro, honestly, like, let's say this actually did happen, bro. This would be such a scary time, man. This would be such a scary time because, bro, the, like, I feel like it will, it, it will actually end up nuclear. Because I feel like from what I've seen, and obviously I don't know all the details, right? But from what I've seen, I feel like America will, you know, we're getting to it in this video, but I feel like they'll, they'll get the upper hand against China and then China will panic and then boom, send nuclear. Because they, they, they won't want to lose. You know what I mean? None of them will want to lose. Most of his missile barrages travel toward their targets in Japan and South Korea. Both have activated their missile defense systems to guard America's bases, with the platform they rolled out alongside the US toward the end of 2023, giving them advanced notice of the missiles China has launched. Many get shot out of the sky, falling harmlessly into the Pacific, but the sheer number of Chinese missiles overwhelms the defenses. Oof. Okinawa is practically destroyed. As um. home to most of America's overseas military in Japan, it was the chief target of these strikes. At the Kadena Air Base, missiles rained down on F-15 Eagle Fighters, E-3 Sentry Planes, and KC-135 Stratotankers. The latter are especially important targets. They'll limit America's ability to refuel its aircraft in the air, uh -oh. restricting them to using the bases that China is so steadfastly attacking. The strike could be considered a success, killing Yo. thousands of American troops in the process. So far, up to this point, China's winning, bro. China's done all the aggression right now. They've done all the damage right now. But Xi knows the bases aren't fully out of commission. He can't launch a ground-based invasion just yet, meaning the surviving crews at these bases will be able to rebuild quickly enough to continue to serve as launching points for the US Air Force. Right. That's okay. He only needs them down for a few days. More missiles make their way toward cruisers and destroyers that the US has stationed in the Pacific. These ships are a little harder to strike, not least because they're not remaining still. Orders from American command have told all to start moving in erratic patterns, hoping to send Chinese missiles off course in the process. The tactic works in some cases, though not in others. Tactic. China is successful in cutting down about half of America's cruisers, as well as several dozen destroyers. Again, a qualified success for Xi. A few minutes later, China's DF-27 and DF-26 missiles are drawing nearer to Hawaii. Yeah, they're winning Dozens right now, bro. Out of the sky by California's missile defense systems, but they can't provide complete coverage. Many more break through, striking ships including the USS Frank E. Peterson and USS Hopper. 
Xi had hoped his strike would also take out at least some of the 13 submarines stationed in Hawaii, but no such luck. Even with his cyber attacks wreaking havoc, the commanders and crews of those submarines received orders to submerge underwater, right. safe from the missile barrage, until the US was ready to fight back. By the end of the first few yeah listen 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 right so china's done all the aggression they don't know the damage they don't know the attacks they're feeling good about themselves but yo america's not lost the attack yet you know what i'm saying hours of the conflict yeah i'll be invested into this expended nearly a quarter of its 4,000 missiles oh wow it has devastation on the american bases in asia though at the cost of drawing japan and south korea into xi's war america's pacific fleet has been severely weakened with Xi's cyber attacks also limiting the speed in which the US can respond to what he's going to do next. The strike's success wasn't total, but it was enough. Day 2 Having bought himself some time with his attack on the United States, leaving his main enemy in a temporary state of disarray, Xi can focus on his immediate target, Taiwan. China has spent the last day battering Taiwan with short-range missiles. The barrage has been successful in taking out several targets, including the smaller islands surrounding Taiwan, but it's also faced a steadfast defense from the US-made Patriot Air Defense System stationed on the island, as well as Taiwan's own Skybo surface-to-air ballistic missile defense systems. Still, the barrage will have to end soon, if only because Xi wants to send ground troops in to take the island. He can't risk killing his own people in friendly fire situations True. after a 24-hour bombardment. Even though I learned a crazy fact in a war video, I think like a year ago, that I was very, very surprised. I don't know the numbers um, now, but I was very, very surprised to realize how, many, how much friendly fire actually happens in war, bro. It was actually crazy to me. Like, jets shooting down, same jets tank shooting on same tanks bro crazy bro in which china expends hundreds of missiles xi assesses the damage he's caused crucially his attacks on america's overseas bases as well as america itself will delay its navy in reaching the taiwan strait and the missiles he's fired at taiwan have severely weakened its naval defenses while fighter planes from longchan Zhengzhou, and huan keep the country's air force occupied he feels ready to start landing troops on the taiwanese mainland but therein he finds a problem. His landing options are limited. That's partially due to the actions of Taiwan's president, Tsai Ing-wen. Okay. She's been preparing for an attack from China for several months, especially in the wake of Beijing growing bolder by conducting military and naval operations in the Taiwan Strait. Yo, why do China want Taiwan so badly? Because I swear that's actually like a thing. Like, I heard somewhere or seen somewhere that there was like threats of China invading taiwan but for what reason is it because it was a part of them and they just want it back as soon as the missiles started flying tsai sent orders to defensive positions on both sides of the island to the east taiwan benefits from having an extensive network of cliffs tsai anticipates that she will look to blockade that side of the island with his navy okay. but is unlikely to launch a full invasion from the east still soldiers are placed on alert telling them to prepare to fight against ground troops that might try to climb the cliffs which have gradients of at least 15%. If need be, those troops will receive orders to destroy the routes built through the cliffs that lead to the mainland. Her main focus lies in Taiwan's west. As the oh, coast closest beautiful. to China, it's going to be the point of ingress into the island. Tsai places all 15 major ports and harbors on that coast on high alert, with orders for their destruction in place if China's forces get near. Tsai can't afford to allow China to set up a naval presence on the island itself if it manages to invade. Then there are Taiwan's beaches. All are heavily fortified, with any Chinese troops that manage to land having to make their way through scores of barbed wire-laden defenses just to achieve any hope of reaching the roads that lead to Taipei. The waters leading to most of those beaches are less than 50 feet deep, meaning China can't land troops en masse. It must take them most of the way before ferrying them across in smaller vessels, all while being subjected to missile fire from Taiwan. Yo, with the amount of missiles they sent to Taiwan, wouldn't Taiwan, Taiwan literally all be on fire? Like, bro, they sent a lot of missiles, bro. Those waters are also packed with shallow mines, with the beaches also containing anti-landing spikes that will prevent China's tanks from making inroads. And if worst comes to worst, Tsai can collapse the roads leading into Taipei from the west, forcing okay. Chinese troops to navigate challenging terrain if they ever hope to reach Taiwan's capital. Tsai is going to make this a war of attrition, and that spells bad news for Xi.
Day 3. The United States is almost ready to counter the initial Chinese offensive. But before it does, Biden puts on his diplomatic hat as he prepares to exploit a key weakness in Xi's plan. What's that? One of China's biggest challenges in the war is economic. The country relies heavily on importing goods, spending $2.56 trillion in 2023 alone. Biden has spent the last three days organizing heavy sanctions against China, with America's network of allies finally paying off. China will not only struggle to import- Wait, wait, wait. Would China actually really struggle with these sanctions? Because it's a big country. What would it be like their main imports that they would need that they wouldn't be able to get? For goods and equipment from the United States, but it'll also be cut off from its European trade partners, all agree to not sell to or buy from China, essentially creating a blockade for as long as the war lasts. Damn. That blockade extends to oil. China imports 11.8 million barrels oh, okay. of oil per day to keep itself running. Per Much day? Of that oil comes from Russia, which is now responsible for about 19% of the oil China buys annually. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Russia won't stop that, though. However, the other 81% right, okay. comes from countries like Saudi Arabia, which are allied to the United States, leveraging diplomatic pressure, um. as well as the concerns that other Asian nations such as Saudi Arabia have related to Chinese expansion. Biden is able to cut off most of the oil reaching China. Yes, Russia will supply Xi, though it isn't able to cover the massive shortfall that results from America's sanctions. And given Putin's war in Ukraine, he also can't risk Russia's trade with other countries for the sake of solely supporting China especially given that he faces his own sanctions. Yeah, yo, R Russia with Ukraine, bro. R Russia, because I watch like top militaries in the world videos, and Russia was seen as like a top military, bro. And Ukraine was never seen that high. But Russia really, really struggling with Ukraine. Do you know what I'm saying? Like really struggling with Ukraine. So are they really a top military country? I don't know, bro. I don't know. She didn't expect this. Now he faces a shutdown. China has to defeat the United States in a matter of months, or else its resources will dwindle to the point where it's practically starved out of the fight that it started. Oh, damn. Day four. With sanctions in place and trade routes in the process of being cut off, Biden's next move is to speak to his allies in NATO. After all, China directly attacked America on its own soil by launching missiles at Hawaii. Wait, so you're telling me America aren't even attacking the back? They're not even attack. They're just chit chat. <laughs> America aren't even attacking back yet. They're just having chit chats with people. It also attacked America owned military bases overseas, which would also constitute an attack on the US. Right. All of this plays in Biden's favor for one reason Article 5 of the NATO Charter. According to this article, if any NATO ally or member nation is the victim of an armed attack by another country, then every other attacked. NATO member will consider this an act of violence against themselves. Right. In short, China's attack on the United States has brought most of Europe into the fold. Biden has been cooperating with NATO members from the moment yeah, he detected unlucky. China's missiles. Collectively, that Honestly, I don't really think America needs us. <laughs> but... It, would, it always helps. You know what I mean? It always helps. So, hey, America and NATO, yeah, I, I, they ain't got a chance. That makes him ready to utilize the they power of 31 nations, including what's left of the United States defenses. 31 nations, The focal bro. point of the counterattack is obvious, the Taiwan Strait. Xi has failed to take Taiwan with his missile barrage and now faces an extended conflict in which he's losing thousands of troops every day to his attempts to land on Taiwanese beaches. Damn. Even if he manages to break through Taiwan's defenses by simply throwing sheer numbers at the island, his troops will face an urban warfare campaign that will see them fight tooth and nail for every street they Yo, manage to claim. I'm very surprised though, because like this is a US versus China, right? But 17 minutes into this video and China is struggling to get Taiwan, which is literally next door. She didn't expect this. And this war of attrition all adds up to time that the US and its allies can take to prepare an attack. Uh -oh. The strategy is to combine America's naval resources with those of its NATO allies, uh -oh. as well as the navies of South Korea, Japan, and Australia. The latter will also be a focal point of the counterattack, as China neglected to destroy the bases America has set up in Australia. The United States sends a fleet of ships, including most of its stock of 11 aircraft carriers, toward the Taiwan Strait. They're accompanied by one of the UK's aircraft carriers, the HMS Queen Elizabeth, hey, loaded UK. with Typhoon FGR-4 and F-35B Lightning jets. 
Similar support comes from Canada, which commits half of its 12 frigates to the American cause, okay. as well as Japan, which sends most of its fleet of 36 destroyers. South Korea Jesus. hesitates. It's happy to support the US in any way that it can, but it also has to be wary of North Korea, which could see China's attack as an opportunity for it to start a war with its southern neighbor. If oh, yo, oh, that actually would happen, bro. Yo, they got a good point. Like, South Korea, like, yo, we really want to help you guys, but we think North Korea will, like, you know what I mean? If they go and help them, North Korea is going to say hello. ...his attack as an opportunity for it to start a war with its southern neighbor. If South Korea commits its naval or aerial resources to America now, it leaves itself open to attack. True. Biden understands this, resulting in South Korea's role being to keep watch over North Korea to ensure it doesn't get involved in the conflict. And now the US has an allied fighting force Good that's point. capable of fighting against China in the sea or air. The fleet sets sail. Week 2. Xi has been bombarding Taiwan to no avail. Every attempt to land ground troops on Taiwan's beaches is met with missile strikes and fierce beach combat. Yes, he's slowly whittling away at those defenses, but for each victory he achieves, a road is destroyed or a tunnel collapsed by Taiwan, okay. forcing his troops to divert over difficult terrain to get to Taipei. The few who managed to reach Taiwan's capital have been destroyed in urban warfare. This was supposed to be a quick victory. It had to be. Every day that China doesn't control Taiwan is another day in which American counter-offensives... Yo, what building is this? This building looks sick, bro. This building is actually a cool-ass building. The few who managed to reach Taiwan's capital have been destroyed in urban warfare. This was supposed to be a quick victory. Is this Taiwan? to be. Every day that China doesn't control Taiwan is another day in which American counter-offensives draw nearer. True. Finally, two weeks after his missile launches, Xi faces the prospect of American naval and aerial assets reaching the Taiwan Strait. Uh -oh. Worse yet, they're supported by NATO and Japan, neither of which wants to see China gain more influence, be it in the Pacific or the Americas. Worse yet for China, its navy, though larger than America's, doesn't compare in terms of sheer yo, firepower. Yo, this is where, like, because this is where it's all going to turn on its head, isn't it? Right? Surely. This is where I can see China going, ah, we're screwed. We messed up, guys. And then click the red button, bro, for the nukes. That's where, and then, and then all hell is just unleashed globally. Though Xi was successful in destroying almost two dozen of America's destroyers in his missile barrage, that still leaves 68 to contend with, around 20 more than China has. And although China has Good more corvettes that. and patrol boats, neither will withstand the combined naval firepower being brought into the Taiwan Strait. Worse yet for Xi, America has an ace in the hole, its rapid dragon tactic. Over the past couple of years, the United States has been retrofitting some of its cargo aircraft so they're capable of dropping pallets of long-range missiles. Each pallet can be stocked up with 30 AGM-158 JASM cruise missiles, which have a range of between 229 and 1,118 miles, depending Jesus. on which version of the missile is launched. Stacked into America's MC-130J aircraft, which Xi didn't target as he didn't believe them to be a threat, these pallets start raining cruise missiles down onto the Taiwan Strait. Those missiles serve two purposes. If they hit a Chinese ship, their 990-pound WDU-42B penetrator warheads can easily destroy most targets. But even if they fail to hit, such a large barrage of missiles launched simultaneously will confuse the missile defense systems built into China's larger warships, right. as well as those in the three air bases that are the launching point for China's fighter jets. While the missile defenses are focused on a flurry of JASM cruise missiles, more targeted strikes can take out targets. The Allied forces turn the tide in the Taiwan Strait. Month 2. Xi has lost the clear passage into Taiwan that he'd established during his initial invasion. He so you're telling me this whole entire war, this whole entire time, and Taiwan's that close to China and they couldn't even take it? Is that what you're telling me? That they genuinely would struggle that hard just to take China? I mean, Taiwan. Bro. <laughs> Still getting troops onto the mainland though each landing is subjected to Taiwanese defenses along with assaults from the US and its allies' navies. Worse yet, he's lost air superiority. In truth, he never really had it. Right. Taiwan's 142 F-16 fighter jets, many of which have been upgraded, may be technologically inferior to China's J-20s. The Infrared Search and Track, or IRST, 
built into the J-20s means that it's far more capable of tracking and eliminating a target than the F-16. But Tsai knew this and knew that support was coming from the US. She's used her F-16s to delay rather than defeat China, Smart. just as she's used her beach and urban warfare tactics to keep China from sending hundreds of thousands of troops into Taipei. That's smart. Now, the US and NATO are in the Taiwan Strait, and they're pushing Chinese forces back to their home country. Constant missile barrages on the Longchen, yeah. Jiangsu, and Huan air bases have rendered them practically unusable, making it a struggle for China to get new fighters into the air as quickly as it had managed before. America's aircraft carriers, of which it brings eight to the Taiwan Strait, can each hold around 75 fighters. Yo. Listen, you know, if let's say this did happen, you know, if this actually did happen, do you reckon it would be like this? And like America and NATO will push China back. And then once China is pushed back, they'll just leave and be. Or do you reckon they'll keep going and try and take China? Like reverse it. What do you think they would actually do? Bringing the allied forces to a total of 600 when at full capacity. Add to that the rapid dragon strategy, and America and its allies are shutting down every attack China attempts. It's not long before America's navy cuts off the passage into Taiwan. Right. Cut off from their target, China's naval and air forces begin a retreat, leaving the few thousand Chinese troops still in Taiwan stranded. They'll be picked off by Taiwan's forces in Taipei, assuming they get there. And with the US now firmly entrenched in the Taiwan Strait, it's able to land troops on the island's beaches to attack the remnants of China's forces from the rear. Damn. It's a lethal pincer movement that soon puts paid to Xi's invasion. Still, it hasn't all been clear sailing for the US. China has managed to use its strong submarine fleet, with its six Shang-class nuclear submarines leading the way, to take out two of America's aircraft carriers. It's a difficult loss, especially given that those carriers housed about 150 fighters between them. But America's submarines are just as lethal. Though right. it has fewer submarines than China, around 60 to China's 78, its crews are better trained and- Wait, yo, can a submarine- how do you even take out a submarine? Oh wait, they got torpedoes, aren't they? Is that how you do it with submarines? No, it'll be submarine versus submarine. ...have fewer targets to strike. Both of China's aircraft carriers, brought into the conflict due to the American assaults on its air bases, are taken out, minimizing China's impact from the air. Xi has to face a very real possibility. He's about to lose this war. Month 3, uh, well, he China known has that. stubbornly refused to give in to the overwhelming force being applied to it. The country's navy lies in... Fact, yo, why am I acting like this is actually a real situation? <laughs> he does know that, and that's why he hasn't done any attacks. <laughs> Bro, I, I'm telling you right now, if he thought he could beat America, he would have done it. He would have done it by now. Matters, with only a fleet of patrol boats guarding its coast to back the few corvettes and frigates it has left, Xi has called his ships back, anticipating an invasion by the United States into the Chinese mainland. Xi has failed to take Taiwan. And in attacking the United All States directly, Taiwan. he's only discovered that America's NATO allies take Article 5 very seriously. Oh, yeah, good job we do. Yo! I'm really curious. Why did it want Taiwan so badly? That was all for Taiwan. Taiwan is so small and so close to China. How can they just not take it? You know what I mean? How, bro, it's, it's a tiny island right next to China. Is America really defending it that well where they can't take it? The same My. goes for other allies, including Japan and South Korea, which have aided the US both because of their military alliances with the country and because neither wants to see the spread of Chinese influence in okay. the Indo-Pacific. Xi knows he's miscalculated. Now he faces a very big question. Does he launch um. nuclear weapons? Uh -oh. China no. has around 500 nukes, Don't do it. as well as ICBMs, capable of reaching the continental United States. Right, we'll just kill this everyone. country's CSS-4 Mod-2 Mod-3 missiles could do the job thanks to their 8,000-mile range. The DF-41 can also hit the mark, as it's capable of traveling nearly 7,500 miles. Jesus. But Xi thinks better of it. Launching his nuclear weapons against the United States would mean a response in kind. And while America's Minuteman III ICBMs lack the range of his missiles, the country's submarines and aerial bombers could easily drop nukes all over China if provoked. Ultimately, Mad. China is forced to capitulate, though its military would prove a strong match for the United States alone and could even have the potential to defeat its American counterpart. It's Wait, that's crazy though. So China's nukes can reach America, but did I hear that right? American nukes can't reach China? But they, they would have to send it with submarines and 
planes simply can't stand up to such a powerful united front. Taiwan proved stronger than Xi expected, with his failed invasion meaning plans to reach the American mainland never got off the ground. And Mad. with most of Europe, thanks to NATO gunning for him. He oh, wait, the actual aim in this video was to get to America's mainland. That was their goal. But they didn't even make it past this point here. Okay, buddy. Uh, give it a rest. Hey, listen, don't ever go to war with America, bro. Can't escape the fact that he's been overwhelmed. Add to all of this the effects of the sanctions and trade blockades America They're created struggling. within days of him starting his war. They've slowly sapped the morale of the Chinese people, resulting in them being ready for surrender. America wins the war, but it's a win that came at a cost. It will take the US years to rebuild its war-torn navy. Wait, wait, wait. How would America end up like this if they didn't even reach the mainland? What? You're telling me that hacking software is, made, is created this somehow? Take the US years to rebuild its war-torn navy. And along with its NATO allies, it will be heavily involved in imposing military restrictions on China for years right. to come. However, it's proven the impact that its cooperative approach to defense can have in a battle against one of its greatest rivals, putting any other major military power that might dare to attack the US on notice in the process. Of course, this is just I one of many potential America. scenarios that could play out if China and the US went to war. It's also optimistic in favor of the US, but what could China do to prevent this series of events from happening? Would they happen at all? Or do you think the US may struggle to receive the support it needs from NATO and its allies nah. in Asia? Tell us what you think nah. in the comments. If US and China was actually going to go to war, of course America is going to get the support from there. Of course, bro. Because America literally supports NATO so much. See, in World War One, World War One, World War Two, Yeah. They'll be chilling. America will be chilling. But really good video. Enjoyed that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv for slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.